the one and only Aaron Fink from Star Dog Champion. How are you doing, Aaron? Good introduction. How are you? <laughs> doing great. Uh, so, where are you calling in from today? Uh, I live here in northeastern Pennsylvania. Okay. Is um, it? For a bench for a while, yeah. Is, is that where uh, Star Dog Champion calls its home? Yeah, kind of uh, the Wilkesbury Spring area. Uh, where are you at? Very cool. Uh, from Buffalo, New York. So I know the uh, okay, uh, I, I know the Wilkesbury area very well, and uh, you know was a big fan of the Staircase back in the day. Oh uh, yeah, sure. We had a lot of good times there. Yeah, definitely. So, um, how did you guys uh, start out champion? Uh, end up linking back up with Nick. Um, and it was the band something that's kind of been on the back burner for a while, or uh, did it just come to fruition? Um, yeah, obviously Nick was the singer in our old band Lifer, and uh, it's not something that's been in the works for a while. No, not at all. You know, we had remained friends over the years, and then uh, you know Mark and I were kind of laying low over the last couple of years, and and. Uh, figured out what was going on with the other band and Nick kind of approached us and was like, well, you know, I'm not really doing anything at the moment either. Let's get together and write and see if there's any chemistry left there or pursue what kind of songs are writing or whatever was head back. So, uh, we got together and we, you know, material started sounding pretty good to us so that we hired a drummer like a year later. Uh, went in the studio and recorded some of the songs and you know, you know, we put that out like a month and a half ago, and we're just kind of starting to try and play some shows and, and see uh, where this thing takes us. Right. You know, uh, Exhale, like you said, was released, um, and it was independently uh, done by you guys. Now, are there any plans to uh, to join forces with the label, or where can, and also where can fans um, pick up Exhale as the, uh, you know, is it available on iTunes or through your website? Uh, it's available on iTunes. And then hard copies we're going to sell at shows as much because most people don't even know what those are these days. But, uh, <laughs> uh, what's the first part of the question? Um, no. Oh, great record label. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, obviously we're interested in, in pursuing that. You know, um, it's hard for rock bands to get signed these days. They don't, they don't, you know, do the big numbers like they used to in the 80s and 90s. But, um, yeah, that's something we're going to pursue now that there's a record out. We'll play some shows and we have some, um, some product to show people. You know, if we went to a label like six months ago, it was just an idea that you would have to sell with someone. Whereas actually now we're kind of bringing it into fruition so you can say, hey, look, this is this, this is our video, this is our music, this is our show, this is our fan. You know, I mean, there's some, there's product there to pitch to somebody. So, right. Kind of, you know, that's going to be the next step for us. Right, right. Okay. Now, our songs like When We Fall and Run Like an Animal, uh, were they written, um, you know, back in the Breaking Benjamin days, or is this something that you guys have been uh, doing together, and is, is it uh, fresh material? Um, Both of those songs you mentioned are Nick's songs. Okay. And I think they're new. I don't think they're old songs yet laying around. So, you know, this band is... Depending on what song we're talking about, either I wrote it or Nick wrote it or, you know, Mark, Nick and I wrote it or it depends on the song. It's not every song is like, uh, written by everybody. Okay. Those two you mentioned are Nick's songs, yeah. Cool, cool. Um, now I've seen a couple pictures. You guys have been playing a few shows here and there. Uh, I saw a picture with you guys hanging out with the Bullby crew. That, that was pretty cool. Um, what are your plans for the, yeah. for the summer? I mean, are you guys, uh, going to be doing like the festival circuit or doing some headlining shows or, uh, you know, where can people uh, look to check you out? Um, I wish I had a great answer for that, but right now everything's kind of in the works and we're talking to a bunch of people and trying to line up, you know, get our ducks in a row. But um, like I said, the record just came out. People are just kind of becoming aware of the band and, and you know, starting to connect the dots of like, you know, the other band that Mark and I were in and this is our new stream. Right. So that takes time. It just doesn't happen overnight. I wish it did, but uh so there's nothing concrete at the time of this interview, but there's some stuff coming up. We'll announce the streams we know. Awesome, awesome. Now 
How did the name originate? Is it uh, in reference to the Mother Love Bone song, or how did you guys come up with the name? Yeah, um, it is. It's uh, Star Champion's Mother Love Bone song. And for any of the people out there listening that don't know who Mother Love Bone is, Mother Love Bone was a band from Seattle in the late 80s, early 90s, and their singer passed away. And then they kind of, kind of, Eddie Vedder, replaced him, so to speak, and they became co-jam. Um, so, you know, Nick and I, and I guess Mark and Josh, too, are we're all kind of the right age, especially Nick and I were the exact right age for to be like when Grunge Music came out and the Seattle stuff, that it we were, you know, it made a big impact on us and being musicians as well. We, it kind of became part of our sound and and we're still really into that music. And so it was kind of, you know, A, it was the name that we could all agree on of like sounds and names we came up with and that wasn't taken. So, you know, some of them weren't taken, but B, it's kind of a nod to the scene and stuff that influenced us as younger guys. So. Okay, very cool, very cool. Um, now, I know how you mentioned earlier, you know, it's tough for rock bands out there nowadays. And, uh, you know, as fans, it can be a little more difficult to find some new music and some new bands. Um, you know, who are, yeah. you, who are you checking you out now? Check it out, right? On your own. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, you know, stuff on the radio is usually a bunch of crap, so. Right, right. So what are you, what are yeah. you listening to now? Are there any new bands or are there any old stuff that you're digging into? Um, you know, who, who are you checking out lately? Uh, I know I'm kind of putting you on the spot here with that question. No, but. no, I just had, uh, the other day I was like, oh, this new artist is really good. Uh, now it's slipping my mind. Um, yeah, there's, like I said, like I, you know, for every song on the radio, I like maybe one out of ten at the most. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and it's not because I'm not open minded, I'm super open minded. I'm and love it all. I got no, I don't, not like a guy that just likes metal or something. You know what I mean? I love it all. So right. it, to me, if it's good and people are passionate about what they're doing, um, I gravitate towards that sort of stuff. But so that being said, well, there's a lot of, a lot of not, you know, not a lot of new stuff that comes out that floats my boat. I, I do gravitate back towards what we're just talking about, like some, you know, my, Sound guard, my pearl jam, my house change, and then you know, I also really into the Floyd and the Zeppelin and, and all that stuff too. So, um, mm -hmm. you know, I, I can, okay. I've heard every Led Zeppelin song like a hundred times, and mm -hmm. you know, there's hardly any of them I'm sick of still to this day. So. Yeah, yeah. What do you what do you think of uh, Chester Bennington taking over as the the new lead singer for the oh, Stone yeah, Couple that's, Pilots? That's, that's one of my favorite bands too. Um, yeah, I mean, he's great, great fun man. I saw like a little YouTube clip. He sounded pretty good. Mm -hmm. and that stuff. Like, there's a thing where you know, I guess it would take there would be a digestion period there where I think of him as the guy in the park and I think of SP and Scott Wyland. Right. So, a little bit of a hard pill to swallow, but I think it's cool. I mean, if the guys just can't get along, they can't make it work. I mean, what else? I mean, as, as for the fans, it might suck, but as for the guys that are just trying to work and, and, mm -hmm. you know, do their thing that they've been working on for 20 years, so they kind of just have to move on and try to work with someone else. But, mm -hmm. um, so I, I kind of know, what their, their view of it as just from being someone that was in a, you know, a popular band for a long time. But yeah, as a fan, it's a little bit of a harder pill as well, you know. But it sounded, he sounded good at doing that stuff. Yeah, yeah, I thought so but, too. Yeah, but Scott Wilde is the band. Right. You know, he's one of my favorite fans of all time, but, mm -hmm. you know, as far as everyone says, I guess he's kind of a hard guy to work with. Right. Um, <laughs> now just to kind of round things out here, I don't want to take up too much more of your time. Um, I'm just wondering, uh, what kind of advice you'd give because I mean, you've, you've done it all. You've been playing guitar a long time. Um, you know, you've been a part of a lot of different bands. Um, you know, what's like, uh, what's a few words of wisdom for those that are out there trying to make it 
um, and just trying to make music as a living. Well, I always encourage anyone to make music um, for fun. I think it's, you know, music is a big part of, of uh, to me, it's just being alive. I, you know, it's almost like, to me, it's just more it's like food, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so I encourage anyone to express themselves through any kind of art form. But, you know, there's some people I think that are cut out to do it more than others. Um, especially at a high level, it takes a lot more than just uh, playing an instrument or singing or writing songs. There's a lot of other um, hiccups that come with it that you have to kind of deal with and, and, and be able to, to uh, persevere, you know what I mean? It's like especially being on the road and stuff, that's not a lifestyle for everybody. But most importantly, just for a kid that's starting out, I would say is passion. Like if you're really into music and you, you hear a song that change your life or, you know what I mean? That, that kind of spark that I had when I was a kid. But also when I, you know, physically when I was playing instruments, you know, I had the coordination or whatever the discipline to sit there and work on it for hours on end. So, I mean, that helps too. I mean, mm-hmm. if you want to play professionally or sing professionally or write professionally, whatever in music, you know, obviously there has to be a little bit of natural born talent there first, and then, then you can build upon that. Mm-hmm. But, um, you know, if we're talking about making a career, but anyone should play if it's for fun, you know, if they're terrible at it. I mean, I play golf, I'm like, for fun, but I'm like the worst golf in the <laughs> but, you know what I mean? So I, I don't, I'm not thinking, oh, I'm going to be a professional golfer, I'm just out there and just walk away and have fun enjoying the game for what it is. So, mm-hmm. you know, I guess there's two parts of the question if you're just doing it for fun or if you want to make a career. I think those are two totally separate ideas. But mm-hmm. 